Welcome to Grade 10 Science. This is Jennifer Sunil, your teacher for this subject. For this video, we would have an introduction about plate tectonics. In the past, people thought that the position of the continents and oceans is permanent. However, the Earth is continually changing as supported by different theories that we would be highlighting in this video. The first theory that we have is the continental drift theory. This theory was actually proposed by Alfred Wegener in 1915. He believed that the continents that we have today started from a supercontinent called Pangaea. This Pangaea actually drifted apart and later divided into two supercontinents named Laurasia and Gondwana Land. So this theory was actually based from paleontologic, geologic, and paleoclimatic records. So here are some evidences used by Wegener to support his theory. So first, we have the fate of the continents. So if you're going to cut now a map of the world, you could actually form jigsaw puzzle pieces of the continents. Okay, so fit daw yan, sabi ni Wegener. So another um, evidence is the distribution of fossils in which the same species were discovered on different continents. So for example, in this picture, you would see now different colors. So this represents now the distribution of the fossils. So for example, um, this fossil of the Mesosaurus is found in South America and some parts of Africa. Okay, so kita nyo yung distribution. It also, if you're going to trace this fern, so from South America, meron siyang fossil, meron din sa Africa, sa India, Antarctica, and meron din sa Australia. Okay, so different species, yung mga fossil daw ay present in different um, continents. Okay, so another evidence is the same um, is the same series of the structures and rock types at different locations like South America, Africa in the end, Antarctica. Okay, so another or other evidences is the glaciation on some continents at the same period in the geologic past. You also have the ancient climates and the roaming nature of the Earth's polar regions. Okay, so this is the polar regions here, uh, the second image. So the arrows would represent the movement. As proposed by Wegener. Okay, so although Wegener have different um, evidences, most of the geologists during his time didn't support him because he doesn't have a concrete model to support his theory. Okay, so second theory that we have is the seafloor spreading theory proposed by Harry Hess in the 1960s. According to Hess, it is actually the seafloor which contributed to the movement of the continents. Okay, so the oceanic mountain ranges called the oceanic ridges are essential to the tectonic movement that results in the drift of the continents. Okay, so for Hess, the one responsible for the moving of the continents is actually the seafloor spreading. So this one is the concept lacking in the continental drift theory of Wegener. Okay? So, this theory also supports the idea that the molten rocks take a long time to come out of volcanically active oceanic ridges, which later form a new seafloor by spreading sideways. Okay? So, here we have the East Pacific Rise, which is one of the most active sites of seafloor spreading. Okay? So, it moves more than 14 centimeters annually. So, every day, there is minimal movement. Okay? We can't feel the movement underground, but if you're going to check or if you're going to follow Fevox in the um, in Facebook, you would see that every day there are actually movements happening on our country. Okay, now this East Pacific rise pushes the continent of Australia, South America, and Antarctica away from each other. Okay, so possibly in the future you would see more separation of the different continents. Okay? So, another product of the seafloor spreading is the Mariana Trench, or the deepest seafloor in the world. Now, the last theory that we have is the plate tectonics theory. So, this is a combination of the seafloor spreading and the continental drift theory. So, according to this theory, the continents seem to drift apart because they consist of lighter rocks that float and move horizontally. Okay? 
So the reasons responsible for the movement of tectonic plates is one, the convection process in the mantle. Okay, so convection is actually the transfer of heat and other atmospheric properties by the movement of masses of air, particularly in an upward direction. Okay, so the heat from this um, molten core would actually cause the movement. Okay, so yung movement, yung heat actually it um, it moves around to move these plates. Okay, so another reason is the changes in the Earth's crust due to internal forces. Okay, so this force is actually created also the different landforms. Now, in this world map, you would be seeing different um, colors, different lines. So, so the red lines would represent now the divergent plate boundaries. The dotted lines would represent the convergent plate boundaries, while the straight black lines here you, um, would represent the transfer plate boundaries. Okay, so this different plate boundaries are responsible for the formation of different landforms. Okay, generally speaking, there are two processes involved in landform formation. So first, we have the constructive process, and we have the destructive process. So for the constructive process, you have the crust of the formation, volcanic activities, and sediment deposition. While for the, the destructive process, we have weathering and erosion. Okay? So we'll highlight now more of the crust of the formation. So this actually involves now different types of plate boundaries. Okay? So we have three general types of plate boundaries. We have the divergent, convergent, and the transform plate boundaries. Okay? So, for the divergent plate boundaries, um, the motion is actually spreading. Okay, so there is separation of the plates. So, this could actually happen in your oceanic crust or in your continental crust. So, the effect is actually constructive, meaning the oceanic lithosphere is created. Okay, so it also causes um, some of the volcanic activities. Okay, now landforms formed in your divergent plate boundaries are actually rift valleys if it occurred on land, while if it's under the sea, you would be forming now your mid-oceanic ridges. Okay? Now, next, we have the convergent um, boundaries. So, this is the subduction or here you would be observing now two plates colliding. So, the effect is actually destructive, meaning the oceanic lithosphere is destroyed. So, there are three types of your convergent plate boundaries. So, pwedeng oceanic crust to oceanic crust. So, this would actually form your submarine volcanoes and sometimes your trenches. If it's oceanic crust to continental crust um, collision, you would be forming now your mountain ranges and sometimes also your trenches. And if it's a continental crust to continental crust collision, it would form now your different mountain ranges okay so it could it could also cause volcanic activity so for the last type for the transfer boundaries um, this is simply the lateral sliding of your plates okay so it is conservative so there is no creation or destruction of your little sphere or of the crust okay so ang form dito is actually your fault lines okay um, there's no volcanic activity here, but you have your earthquakes. Okay? So, some points to remember in this video. So, first, you have the plate tectonics theory, which actually combines uh, the seafloor spreading and the continental drift theory. So, the seafloor spreading, it is highlighted that it is the oceanic crust which moves. While for the continental drift theory, uh, you would be seeing... Um, different evidences that could actually support this theory, okay? So, next, the different plate boundaries produce different landforms. So, three types of our plate boundaries would be the convergent, convergent, meaning there are two plates colliding. So, these form now different structures like your volcanoes, mountain ranges, and trenches. Divergent plate boundaries, so this happens or this occurs when there are two plates moving apart. So, it forms now your valleys and your mid-oceanic ridges and your transform boundaries, which actually forms your fault lines. Okay? So, basically, this video is an overview. If you have read your modules, then this actually supports your, or this um, video supplements your, 
your modules, okay? So that ends our introduction to plate tectonics. If you have questions, you may comment down below or you may send a personal message. That would be all for today. Bye!